Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. did he say he'd call, David? He didn't say what time. What did he say? He said tonight. Tonight? There's four hours left to tonight. Precisely. So let's talk about something else. What do you think Mr. Carrington's going to say when he calls? If I knew, darling, I'd tell you. And if I told you, you wouldn't have any of the fun of waiting for that phone to ring. This isn't fun. This is torture. You have to read that book. Ooh, I'd just like to. Don't you have anything to do? How about knitting some little things? Too soon for that. I can take a hint. <laughs> you can also hear it thunder. Oh, I wish I could hear the phone ring. Come on, Shakespeare. Come on up. You can sit next to me on the sofa, baby. I can almost hear myself think. She's just like a wake. Oh, where'd I put my darling needle? Shakespeare, have you seen my needle? You haven't, eh? I bet you took it away. I bet you did. David. David. Hmm? No. I don't mean to interrupt, darling, but have you seen my needle? Uh, no. Oh, here it is. David, you can be quiet again. Thank you. <gasps> the telephone. The telephone. I didn't hear it. Well, if you didn't hear it, why are you running toward it? My sixth sense told me. Keep your fingers crossed. Hello? Oh, Mama, it's you. How could you do this to me? No, don't hang up. No, I don't mind talking to you. It's just that we were expecting a call from Mr. Carrington from Chicago. No, I don't know what he's going to say to David. I've asked David, and he says he doesn't know yeah, either. Give me that phone. Mama, he's tearing the phone out of my hands. Careful, David, you'll break uh, uh, Listen, Mrs. Brown, you're worse than Claudia. If you're so curious to find out what's going on, why don't you just come over here yourself and find out? I'll not say another word to you over the phone. You come over here this minute. Goodbye. She's coming over. You were sweet to ask you, darling. <laughs> I'm a fool. Of course, but why? Because one curious woman is more than I can cope with, and yet I am about to be surrounded by two. I know why you asked Mama. You hope we'll ask each other questions and leave you alone. I didn't say that, but it's an idea. Now, shh. Oh, where did I put that needle? In my lapel, here. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, if anyone would peek through that window, this would look very domestic, wouldn't it? We live on the 12th floor, and we're married. You think we look married? What makes a person look married, anyway? Oh, it's nice to be married. It's nice when it's 8 o'clock and the dishes are done. Shakespeare's purring away. It's Christmas soon. We don't have any place to go tonight. I don't intend to move an inch until the telephone rings. Is that listed in order of importance? Mm, backwards it is. I wish I could purr, too. It's so expressive. Shakespeare must have a little business in his throat that I hadn't got. You've got plenty of little business in your throat. Nothing to purr with. What do you suppose it is? Mm, something he found in a Cracker Jack box. You want to listen to it? Claudia, you just said that you don't want to move an inch. I'll move a foot. I'll move both of them. All right. All right. I know when I'm licked. All right, darling, pull up a chair and sit down next to me. I'll even let you breathe down my neck. But I don't like chairs. Chairs aren't upholstered in tweed. And they don't smell of tobacco and lilac. Chairs don't smile out of the corner of their mouth or raise an eyebrow. Chairs simply don't look like you at all. Then why do you keep mistaking me for one? Well, you do have arms and legs. <laughs> Before you pull me up and make yourself comfortable, <laughs> put down that darning needle. It looks too much like a darning needle. <laughs> it's down. So am I. Oh. It rang! 
you answer it. No, you answer it. It's for you this time. I know it. If it's probably Mama saying she's not coming over. No, no, it isn't. It's Mr. Carrington. Dave, don't just stand there. Answer it. Hello. Yes, this is Regent 21457. Yes, I'll hold on. Is that him? It's the operator. From Chicago? Yes, Chicago. Oh, I can't stand it. Keep still. I won't be able to hear. How can you be so calm? I'm dying. Hello? Yes, this is David Norton. Of course it is. Uh, Put him on. Who is it? I'm not even breathing. Breathe. I can't afford you falling at my feet in a heap. Hello? Yes, yes, I can hear you fine. What's he say? Yes. Uh, uh, Yes. Yes. What's he saying? Uh, Oh, uh, within the month, eh? What month? Yes. The plans are pretty well worked out now. David. In Chicago? Chicago? What Chicago? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. We'd have to work from there. From where? Yes, of course I understand. Well, I'll have to think that over and let you know. Fine. Fine, yes. Yes, I'll call you. Yes, good night. What did he say? When did he start? You heard everything. I didn't. All I heard you say was yes, 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 until I thought I'd go mad. What did he say? He talked it over with a few of the men there. They seem to be very enthusiastic, too. David, I knew you were brilliant, but I didn't know you were this brilliant. What else? What else? Well, I don't know how you're going to feel about this. I feel wonderful about everything. I don't even know how I feel about it. What's the matter? Is there a fly in the ointment? The fly is Chicago. Chicago? What's the matter with Chicago? Nothing is the matter with Chicago. Then why is it a fly? Because, my ducky, we happen to be living in New York. So? And Mr. Carrington would have us move to Chicago. Move to Chicago? That's what he said. It would be the most convenient way of organizing this project. But, but, but we can't move to Chicago. We've got this beautiful apartment here. We haven't even finished furnishing it yet. Yeah, I know, I know. And we have no place to live in Chicago. True, true. Well, I've never even been to Chicago. I suppose lots of people in Chicago have never been to New York. That's different. I think this is something we're going to have to talk about, darling. We are talking about it. I don't see why you can't... Well, I suppose there's no point in suggesting to him that you can't go to Chicago, is there? I really can't think of a good reason why we shouldn't. How do you feel about it? Oh, I haven't got anything against it, really. I, I've lived in lots of other places besides New York. It's all pretty much the same. I suppose so, as long as you're with the people you love. Mama. What about Mama? Oh, David, I couldn't leave Mama. Why, we've never been in two different cities from each other. Except when you and I were on our honeymoon, and that was... Yeah, that was different. I'd miss her so. So would I. With the baby coming? The baby's a long way off. But he's coming. And think of Mama, David. She'd have nobody. Wouldn't be so bad for me because I'd have you, but Mama, what would she do? She'd get along, darling. Mama's a pretty independent person. Oh, it's no fun being independent when you have to be. So complicated. Why does everything always have to get so complicated? It's a wonderful job. Why can't it be here on 42nd Street instead of... Oh, David, what are we going to do? I told you we don't have to make up our minds tonight. Postponing won't help. I won't change the way I feel. David. You've changed already. David, we're such dopes. Why didn't we think of this before? Think of what? It's all so simple. This lighting doesn't have to have a cloud. We can take Mama to Chicago with us. Are you serious? Certainly. Chicago's good enough for us. It's certainly good enough for Mama. We're taking the baby and and Shakespeare with us. So why not Mama? At this point, the baby and Shakespeare have no minds of their own. Mama will love it. Just because she has an apartment here in New York doesn't mean she can't move. After all, that's not stopping us. I don't think Mama is going to want to come to Chicago. Who cares whether she wants to or not? She's coming. It's all settled. Oh, David, call up Mr. Carrington and say yes. That is Mama. Wait till she hears. She'll be so surprised. Come in, come in. We've got news for you. Did he call? 
What did he say? No, no, no. Don't come in. Go home and pack your bag. Claudia, that's a nice greeting. Do as I say, Mama. Go home and pack your bag. David, take her away. Lock her up someplace and tell me what Mr. Carrington said. You better listen to her, Mother. Here, give me your coat. I'll keep my coat on. I may want to make a quick getaway. Mama, we're moving to Chicago. Well, that's nice. When are you leaving? Mama, you don't understand. You're leaving with us. What is going on here? Simple. The two of you are so thick-headed. Look, Mama, we've got to go to Chicago because Mr. Carrington wants David there, and we're taking you with us. Oh, you are. I told you. Maybe Mama doesn't want to go to Chicago. Ridiculous. A prospective grandmother should be with her prospective grandchild. This one is too prospective. David, I think it's wonderful about your new job. It is wonderful. Very wonderful. You know, I didn't expect this kind of an opportunity for years and years. Well, we should grab it. We're not even discussing it anymore. We're all grabbing it. Isn't it wonderful to have it all settled? Uh, darling, why don't you telephone Julia and tell her about it? Oh, that's a wonderful idea. You have such wonderful ideas, Mr. Norton. Everything's wonderful. I'll call her right away. After all, she started it all, didn't she? Well? Well, Mr. Norton? Can it be this simple? No, it can't. Why not? We would love to have you with us, Mama. I'd love to come, but I can't. And I'm glad this has happened. It's just right for you and Claudia. She'll really be on her own this time. That's what I'm afraid of. It's going to be quite a big dose for her to take, Mother. She'll take it. I'm not sure it's the right thing for her just now. You know what I mean with the with the baby and all. That's just why it's right, David. She'll learn to be a little less of a daughter and a little more of a mother. Well, to tell the truth, Mama, all of this worrying of mine, it's, it's not entirely about Claudia. I'm just worried about you. Well, that's sweet of you, but don't worry. I'll come and visit you. Why, you won't be able to get rid of me. I thought when you got your own apartment, she'd let go a little, but New York is very small, especially when you live just around the corner. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I were sure you were right. Do you want me to tell her? No. I will. Not tonight, though. She's had enough for one day. Besides, I'll, I'll have to talk it over with Roger tomorrow anyway. That is, before it's all settled. There'll be plenty of time to tell her. But, David, I'm very glad for the two of you. I wish I had my hat on, Mrs. Brown. Just so I could take it off. To you. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. If holiday shopping is fun for you, you can make it more fun. If it's a chore and a bore, you can make it less so simply by pausing for frosty, refreshing Coca-Cola. It's easier to shop when you're refreshed. And you'll find more of those familiar red coolers in lunchrooms, service stations, and food stores nowadays. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. <laughs>